Sam, I need to I need to start off the session by saying a couple of quick things. First of all, um, I'm now on to laptop number three. <laughs> laptop one failed. The camera failed on me. Laptop two, the battery charging pack has failed on me. Laptop three, I've just stole from a neighbor's house. So we're <laughs> we are flying now. We are flying. So big thanks to Michelle and Tom for letting me have their laptop. Lovely people. Um, absolutely brilliant. But uh, <laughs> so all in all, all, there you go. Tom's even on tonight. Um, so Good Tom's stuff. got a <laughs> pack tonight. Um, you know, big, big fan. But, you know, Samuel, what do you, what do you make of this, Sam? What do you make of it? Oh, brilliant. It's a brilliant, brilliant idea, and uh, yeah, so pleased to be involved. And and I think you've done exceptionally well to to get this organised and uh, and think around the situation. Really, I think yeah, remarkable. Super. Sam, everyone got a little dra- a little dram guide. Okay, it's just a yep. wee it's just a wee run through. Okay, of what we're doing. All right. Yeah, I've got mine on the other screen. So yeah, I got the PDF. Super. Yeah. There, so look, yeah. it goes in a good order. Uh, the majority of people, I assume, everyone has six in their box. If they don't, uh, their that's missing my, number six will have it my out. Fault. Them. <laughs> yes, oh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's all right. But look, um, it, it, it is what it is. Do you know? It is what it is. You know. And I, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, we've got some good. We've got some good drums in here. You know what I mean, we've got some good liquid. Um, and I, I, I want you to talk about this, Sam. This is your two hours of fame. You can bring to us everything that you want to talk about, um, Gelson's, everything you want to talk about, and also where the brand's going and what the brand mm-hmm. is doing, and what, what's expected maybe of of yourself and what's expected of your colleagues in, in Ireland and Northern Ireland and around the world, how you're promoting this. Th- this these sessions are informal, they're relaxed, we have a lot of banter, um, that's what it should be, you know, so don't be frightened to, 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 to speak freely, okay? No problem. And also bring in those conversations and comments, all right? No problem. I mean, I, I suppose before I start, I mean, I, I imagine everyone would like to know where Gelson's came from, the origin of it, and and where it's about. So it's got a very interesting origin story. Uh, the company was created by a chap called Samuel Gelston, no relation to me, uh, back in, uh, not, not one of the Samuels of history, but back in <laughs> 18, 1830. And, uh, and uh, he, he was a, a um, renowned whiskey man, started his own his own distillery and own company in uh, the 1830s. And he was mainly a, a, a bottler and a blender back then. Ah, uh, Sam was expecting Sam Neill. John, Sam Neill, uh, when COVID's over, expect Sam Neill. He's in the story, believe me, so he's coming. Uh, so, so, yeah, so going back to 1830, Samuel Gelson starts off the whiskey company mainly as a, a bottler and a blender, which was common in those days. So he would get whiskey from all over the island of Ireland and produce his own uh, bottlings of it. Uh, he, when he passed away in 1869, he didn't have uh, any heirs or any issues. So his, so his remaining uh, estate uh, was sold on to uh, a chap called Harry J. Neal, H.J. Neal, who is actually, the, I think, the five times great-grandfather of a chap called Johnny Neal. Who uh, revived the company to this day? So uh, they they went along pretty merrily along up until about uh, 1930 because they they got most of their whiskey um, under H. J. Neal from the Cromack Distillery in in Belfast. Yeah, because there was a family connection there. It was his brother-in-law and a good friend, one of the McConnells, that actually uh, owned a bit owned the business, and so they got a lot of their whiskey would come from the Cromack. And that would be the backbone of uh, them also as, as bottlers and blenders of the day. And so after that uh, went away in, uh, in 1930, to get the original Gelson's company, um, again, as with many Irish distilleries uh, around the era between the wars, um, slowly became defunct around about Prohibition time because, uh, because it would, uh, because uh, a little bit of history and politics in it, but uh, essentially what happened was that the, the Americans used to drink uh, about three or four to one Irish whiskey to Scotch whiskey, but the Irish uh, respected prohibition, whereas the Scots didn't. And uh, <laughs> Senator Joe Kennedy uh, form, formed, a, formed an unofficial mission to come and get whiskey from the British Isles, found there was no play in Ireland, so uh, did some deals with the Scots, and lots of uh, Scottish whiskey flowed into America during prohibition. And... Uh, that that became the taste of America, 
and that uh, did for a lot of the Irish distilleries during that period, among other things. Yes. So, so that went, and uh, it was revived uh, when when Johnny decided to re- Johnny Neal, who uh, of fame, Johnny who created Whitley Neal gin. So this was his first one, which he made nearly twenty years ago. That, that was the first one. It's now uh, one right. of the big biggest selling gins in the, in the market. It's, this is what it looks like these days. That's what it started off with, and that's what it looks like. Sam, I, I love the I love the color of the, the gin bottles. Those gin bottles yeah. are, are great. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Like, it, it works phenomenally well. And uh, yeah, Johnny's been uh, one of the great pioneers of of modern gin, and 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 that coming back in a big way. And and uh, but he's always been more inter- interested in a lot more than just than just gin. I mean, yeah, another one, another colorful bottle. You like this one? That's another one of his, Marleybone, which is. Yeah, premium strength. So he uh, hit upon uh, a long-standing ambition of his to bring back one of his family companies, which was Gelston's, because Johnny's family's been in uh, distilling and brewing, going back to, I think we've got it back to about 1726 now. Uh, I think he was, is that related to the Riddle family in, uh, who were distillers up in Cromber uh, back in the 1730s. So way, way back his family go, they involved, He's actually related to the Greenalls family as well, uh, the brewing family from from the north of England. So he's wow. got uh, yeah the long long rich history of. Uh, it's like Samuel that, that it's like alcohol's in his blood, is it? Absolutely, you know, like absolutely. So Pumping so through. yeah, he, he got back into it. He spent he actually uh, he went into the city as working as an analyst analyst for, uh, for for about ten years, and then got very sick of that and decided to go and start his own gin company. Hence, Whitley Neal came up, came about, and that's where. Where he got to, so one of his long standing ambitions was to re- revive the whiskey side of uh, the family business. So, Gelson's he uh, he uh, knew all the history of that and decided he wanted to bring it back. So, back in 2016, he first teamed up with uh, Frank McCarty, who's uh, ex Bush Mills and ex Springbank, uh, master, a master distiller, Hall of Fame distiller, and uh, they went about looking for some age casts with which to. Do some releases of uh, some some good Irish whiskey back in the tradition of the Gelson's uh, mm-hmm. uh, tradition, which was actually as a bottle and a blender. So they uh, found a way to where Frank knew uh, some very good Bushmills casks going on, and uh, and uh, so they went about buying up quite a few. So there's a good ninety one casks and some good 2000, 2004 casks, which, uh, which they've gotten. So they then then began. Back in the 2017, releasing first uh, some 25 year old and some 26 year old uh, whiskey and some 15 bourbon cask whiskies. So those are the first ones that, kept, that came out. And, uh, yeah, and, and here, am I right in saying they sold out very quickly? They did. Um, they did indeed. Did indeed. So um, so we had to go back and so we had to reach another 26 year old. So they're, they're currently, this is. One of them. This is, uh, I think, a batch number three. Yeah, bottle one hundred and eleven of one hundred and fifty, which I've rescued from a trade show. Huh. So it's, it's, it's sitting there because yeah. Uh, so there's actually, I think there there are a few around now for sale. The twenty six year olds still, uh, but when when that's done, then that's that's the end of the twenty six year olds because we haven't. I think we might have about five or ten maybe that have come back from that were supposed to go overseas before COVID. But I think. I think no, they maybe not, but yeah. Apart from that, they're they're done exactly. Full sold very very quickly. Um, yeah. Did did really well. So um, so we think we did three releases altogether of the twenty six year olds uh, over the course of the last um, two and a half three years, and uh, the fifteen again the fifteen straight bourbon cask for again sold out sold out very very well. And so um, there there is some there are a couple of interesting things on the on the back burner with regards to that. So one of it's your Hopefully, you taste today, which is a 15 sherry cask, is one of those uh, older 2004 uh, Bushmills, 2003 Bushmills were put into sherry for a couple of years to uh, to to to, uh, to yeah. add a little bit of interest and difference. And then what, what followed that was then uh, the 12 year old was a limited release, three 12 year olds, a port, a sherry, and a rum finish. Mm. And that was uh, we, we released those uh, uh, sort of first quarter last year and those are mostly sold through there's a little you'll find a little bit of um a few of them around there online and a few places but we don't have any anymore which is a good testament to, to how it's gone it is 
Yeah, and and uh, and so yeah, back end of last year and early this year, we then came forward with um, um, the five year old Sherry cask, which is not a limited edition, which is a, a a slight departure. I mean, when we go through whiskies, I'll tell you more about uh, exactly the distilleries they've yeah. come from and, and what it is. But uh, so the five year Sherry is not a limited edition, and then that foresaw foresaw um, what what is to be the sort of main permanent range, which will be. Uh, the single malt, which is a West Cork liquid, which was uh, been been around about around about six seven months now. That's that's been that's been around about. So that that's come from um, that's come from uh, West Cork distillers. So we, you'll see that through our through our lifespan of the whiskies, there are three main air, three main distilleries we've got the whiskey from: West Cork, Cooley, and Bushmills, in different ages. As they go up, so so the, the range is to be essentially it'll be West Cork for the everyday single malt in the pot still, and then we'll still look for interesting uh, bottlings where we'll shop around for interesting casks to do to do some of the, uh, the the more the more interesting and uh, and rare stuff, and then uh, can I ask a question yeah. at this point, Samuel? I mean, there's a Joe. I think that's very honest. You know, you, you're honest about where the liquid is coming from. That's really important. Mm -hmm. um, I, I appreciate that. Is there is there a conversation with um, is there a conversation with West Cork about them actually producing a bespoke mash bill for yourself? What the, this is actually so the pot still and the single malt are bespoke for us. So so they actually are. So it's not a case yeah. of um, so it was abs absolutely absolutely because we, we used we were sort of the angel investors in West Cork as a company bigger company yeah. Halewood uh, yeah. up up, and, up until uh, start of last year. And but still, we've got a, an ongoing sort of, uh, sort of contract slash relationship for them to produce uh, whiskey for us for the next uh, two or three years. Still to run on that, I think it was a five okay. year five year deal we had with them to produce bespoke whiskey for us. So this is uh, this is all part of that. So there's the pot still and and the single malt and uh, also some some releases to come are all under that uh, under Super. that uh, under that deal. So we'll have the run ski. There is also a long-term ambition, um, which uh, COVID's got in the way of slightly to actually uh, open up our uh, our own distillery, and so to be so that the idea will be uh, we're hoping to be sort of ready for 2022, 23. But that's uh, in terms of whiskey being produced yeah. uh, and actually whiskey ready to go out of there because we're hoping to break ground this year. But that that's now uh, slightly on, on the back burner until. Yeah. Until this and this situation, and also uh, uh, just uh, Brexit as well, being another consideration until that that uh, sorts itself out. Maybe. Sam, we've got, we've got so much to talk about. I want to get yeah. I want to get the first one drunk, absolutely, and then we want to keep talking. But yeah. Um, yeah, so lead us through this one. We're on Gelson single malt, uh, so, number yeah. one. Okay, absolutely. number one in your pack. Yeah, so number one is the single malt. So this is this is um, it's quite a bold idea because there aren't many. I think uh, I think I can put a, a bracket around the the M there. Many stroke any uh, three year old single malts out there that I am aware of that are that are out there um, on mass release because yeah. yeah, I know I know there are some some limited editions and some and some small batch releases of that. But this is this is um, so this is actually probably the first um, single malt whiskey from uh, West Cork itself, I believe. Uh, that's uh that's that's on a lot long term release in terms of it's uh it's an ongoing one so this is a triple distillation uh and a matured in bourbon cast so it's got a very interesting character to it very chocolatey that's what i find very very nutty on the nose very nutty isn't it it's very nutty. Yeah. it's it's almost like it's almost like um a child's play-doh with a yeah you know with a with, with a, yeah with a you know what you know the pistachio uh cakes you get yes those little pistachio buns that you would get the pistachio mm -hmm. cake, a little bit like that. Yeah, it, it's 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 very yeah, it's very much it's uh, yeah, hanging around with, with mum or granny or auntie making marzipan or whatever yeah. it is in the kitchen, and all those those great smells you get off of that. I, I I remember as a child having play doh, and I and my my mother, you know, would would you know would crack up because I would be eating the play doh because it's uh, <laughs> you know because it, it was just like marzipan, the texture, the feel to it, and the and the smell. Uh, the taste, not so much, but the smell was it was it was marzipan yeah. all, all over. And I'm a massive fan. I don't know, but I'm a massive fan of uh, Battenberg. 
um, you know, those types of cakes, wedding cakes, and yeah. that. So, you know, that, here on the nose, this is really nice, isn't it? We're we're, we're experiencing that. that yeah, nose. I like that. that. Uh, absolutely, and I th I think that one of the things that is great about for me is that um, because of the because of the as we talked about before, because of the of that a lot of distilleries went uh, between the wars and there weren't that many left. There's, there's most aged Irish whiskey that most single Irish whiskey you're going to get. Everyone knows it's going to come from one of three places essentially. Yeah. And to have different things now, on, okay, I think it's um, great for Irish whiskey in general in terms of that variety. It's, you know, you have to be applauded for having the, the, having the guile to go out there and do a three-year-old whiskey because, mm, mm. you know, I mean, people would be, you know, people are, are frightened, I think, you know, to put out three-year-old whiskeys, uh, mainly because people actually look at age statements, first of all, yeah, age yeah. statements. And when we talk about non-age statements, we usually tend to find that uh, they're, you know, they're, they're in around that seven-year bracket uh, and yeah. they're frightened to call it a seven-year because they think it's not a 10-year. Yeah. Um, it's not an eight year, it's not a ten year, it's not you know, it's so so e even being admitting that listen, this is a three year old single malt, this is mm. something you know to get behind. Um you I definitely understand the, the see the, the casts that you've used for this. Uh Bourbon yeah. casks, where are these casts? Do you have any idea where the casts are coming from? Do you have a, an idea of the uh, idea of the American um bourbons that, that have been used in the past? That that we don't. It's uh it's uh, yeah, try it when it gets uh, a little bit interesting information out of uh, out of um, um, some of the guys at West Cork sometimes is an interesting thing because uh, they're, they're great characters down there, but yes. not, not necessarily a not necessarily a they're a, flam isn't they're a flamboyant lot, they are a flamboyant yeah, they are. lot, aren't they? They are, they are, <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, you speak to John at me, something like along the America, of course. The reason, the reason why I asked the question, Samuel, is because you know, we, we have a lot of people in here. Uh, over the, the last couple of days, who are asking questions specifically about yep, the, 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 wine, the wineries? They're asking questions yep. about the bourbon, uh, you know, the, the, the bourbon distilleries. They're asking questions because actually, some people have go-to drinks. I have a go-to maybe with the, with a certain bourbon uh, branding that I would go to, you know, and I I really appreciate that they're used with another distillery. So, the yeah. Buffalo Trace have um, Buffalo Trace have some great bourbons. Um, they have some good bourbons and great bourbons. I've not had a bad bourbon from from Buffalo Trace. Probably is one, but I just haven't had it. Yeah. But yeah. then, you know, the, the, those barrels are used by the lads at Kilhoman over in Scotland, and only use Buffalo Trace barrels. And it, and do you know what? There's an affinity there. So people have the yeah, have absolutely, absolutely. And, and I, yeah. I appreciate I appreciate that. I think that when you can when you have that relationship and that provenance, I think I think that's. That's a, that's a really good and interesting thing to have. I mean, I, I've I've been involved with some distilleries and uh, different things, some rum distilleries, some whiskey distilleries as as well, some Scotch whiskey distilleries, who who would use a sort of different method where you'd um, essentially buy from lots of different distilleries, break up the break up the barrels and re yeah. and actually yeah, recoup it, recast them, recharge yeah, them. So, so, yeah, so, yeah. so essentially, you you mix up the mix up mix up the staves, and therefore you it, it's it's a way, I suppose, where you because it, if especially if you want if you've got ambitions to produce a, a quite a lot if you want to be um, producing quite a lot of whiskey then supply supplier cast can be an issue and you don't want to have a variation between them so so no although yeah. we, I mean, we talked earlier on about it depends on what depends what you want I mean if you want mm. to put out a, a statement or, or you want to put out a continuous product that will have longevity yeah you maybe don't want that interruption you really want to have steady you know taste. But sometimes it is, you know, sometimes it just becomes, you know, natural and organic to have, you know, a mix up of barrels that allow you to, you know, um, you know, I suppose you, you then have variant uh, tastes, uh, which can be good if you're if you're going to go for if you're going to go for unusual, there's no harm to that. I like, I mean, I'm liking the taste. I'm I'm going to get I'm going to guess on a couple of of points here, um, what I'm getting. So I'm getting that, that yeah, it's definitely nutty, but on the taste. It's like um, it's actually it's it's nearly like a wine, which is really strange. It's like a yeah. What I I get like notes of it's almost um yeah grape grappa. It's, yeah, uh, it, yeah. It's yeah, very it's, much like a grappa. Yeah, it's a yeah. good one. Yeah, yeah. Very much like grappa, but it's and and 
and there's a, there's, a, there's a slight saltiness to it, which is really, I wasn't expecting that, you know, from the nose. I wasn't expecting a slight saltiness, but um, it's like a salty, you know, but a kind of fudgy kind of salt. I like that, you know, it's uh, it's actually quite, it's, and do you know what? It's not overly, it's not overly alcoholic. We're at 40%, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. 40%. Mm -hmm. It's very, very, very drinkable in that respect. You know, there's no, it's not harsh at all, actually. I was expecting from that three-year-old, I was expecting to really poke from from my mouth into my eyes and, you know, yeah. and, and, and kind of like worry me. But it's not, it's it's, 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 uh, it's actually quite, yeah. it's actually quite subtle. It's quite yeah. a subtle yeah, it, flavor. It, it, is, it is in many ways. I think, to, back to your earlier point about why, why go with three, I think one of our thoughts are, uh, at our end is that, that I think, there's quite, like you said, with the age statements, things like that, I think there's quite a um, a premium price put on single malt in general. Yes. And in a way, so we want to challenge that a little bit because there's no particular reason why uh, why a single malt can't be a, a, an accessible price as compared to, say, a, a premium blend of, of some sort. Yes. There, there's, there's no particular reason why not. It's uh, it's It's more convention and choice that whereby things are late so part of our this is our sort of way of saying well why shouldn't why shouldn't you be able to pick up a single malt irish whiskey for like 22 quid or 33 euro if you're in ireland so yeah that, why not why shouldn't it be around about that price point? i think i think you're just right i think you know we need to have accessible liquid accessible yeah. whiskey uh, is uh, is paramount uh, there is no there is that that there is no doubt about. Um, you, I mean, what what I mean, what are you up against in terms of not? I mean, non-age statement single malts. Uh, again, it's non-age statement stuff. Um, it's going to be, you know, what have we got on the market? So, can... so um, I think in terms of, I, I don't think there's anything that's widely available below the sort of entry tealing and Bushmills ten. And in terms of what you can get in lots and lots of places, there are obviously limited yeah. re releases and 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 what have you. So it, it's it's a bit like breaking the mold, and we're doing a similar thing with the pot still in the fact that there isn't. No one has come in at that that surprise point and said, "Look, you can buy single mold or single pot still at this price." Yes, and through it and have it because I, I suppose in a way we're we're probably in a slightly different position to some people because we have the age cast that we've uh, we purchased from other distilleries. So, so we, so we have that as a, as a, the, the, as a lead off. And so therefore we can be a bit braver with. Tell me this, Samuel, would, would you, would you contemplate using this to euro product and launching it into a, a, a cask for a finish? For a you know for or you know to give it even a longer finish potentially. So you take that three year old liquid and you give it a year. Well, you know, um, maybe up to a year in a in a Marsala cask or a Madeira cask or a rum, you know, something. Is well, there, I've I mean, got the batch. The, 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 these these things are being these things are actually being laid down and are and so and so the, a lot of these are uh, are in train. So over the next number of years, there'll be releases and things like that. So the, the experiments are ongoing. I think I think you would. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to take a pot guess, but I'm sure you're going to just say you're 100 percent right, Paul. That you're going to, you know, that. Whitley Neal, the you know Whitley Neal Group have lots of casks, from you know have access to lots of casks. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So it will be nice to see. I might, I'm actually thinking. Do you know what? This is three years old. I mean, if, if there's not much expectation, um, you know, fair enough. If people don't expect very much, fair enough. But um, I, I think that, that there's longevity in the in the in the the actual taste here. The longevity in the whiskey, which actually, if we're if we're putting that and <laughs> we're putting that into some un unusual cask and we're going to manipulate those casks, um, who knows where we'll be in in fifteen years' time? Yeah, you know? oh, who, absolutely. Who knows where? That, that's that's yeah. absolutely, absolutely right. And in actual fact, the the five year old is actually one of those uh, type of experiments. So that 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 is yeah. that that is um, the first the first unlimited edition. Of I'm, that. Glad I'm glad we're I'm glad we're on the same page, Sam. I'm glad we're on the same page. Yeah. Uh, Jason is just making a point. One of our admins is making a point that there's pictures of your bottles that are available in the handout section. So, so yeah, people, if you can't see behind me, I've, I've tried yeah. to place them behind me. So, but, so. I mean, look, your bottles are. I mean, let's be frank. Look, you know, you're putting liquid into some stunning bottles. Those bottles are stunning. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, I think that was one of Johnny's. Uh, Never strip on the bottle front. You know, you've not no, abso- gone for uh, abso- absolutely not. You, you've not gone for the plastic bottle. No, you've no. gone for some beastie bottles. Very much, and uh, yeah, a lot of this is yeah, goes back to the old original Gelson's label. It's a recreation of. Um, it's. I think it's. It's. It's clearly a more. Um, I suppose um, ooh, a, a premium bottle than probably was back in the day but a yeah. lot, of, lot of detail on the bottle in terms of that even down to on the side johnny's signature on the side of side of all, all the bottles i think and, a uh, lot of people i mean it, a lot of people go by the looks don't they but that's a yeah I, i've held those bottles i've felt them you know they're great for they're great for in bars they're just the right kind of weight for a barman yeah they're, they're great for they generally are they look great uh, as part of your own collection in the house if people are going to have that eye, eye for a bottle but they are they're they're practical they're practical bottles you know yeah they're not they're not flimsy they're not sturdy you know I, I believe I have dropped one or two uh, in the past and they are bounced uh, they're strong bottles you know they're not gonna they're not gonna um, yeah not gonna that, on uh, you. absolutely I think it was um the the big decision was to continue because the original um releases were obviously the 26 and the 25 and the 15 year old which were limited edition so you you want to make put it in a premium bottle but yeah. the, the big decision has been to carry that on through the range and all the way all the way through from the entry level upwards and that's a it, it's a big investment because if anyone is on the inside it you can it costs you a few quid um in order to do that and yeah and and actually invest in the glass whereas you're not scrimping no. you're, that's what i'm saying you're not scrimping there's no there's no scrimping here it's like, yeah yeah it's, I, I think you know, that, I respect, you, you're respecting them you respect the 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 the, the, the aficionados you're respecting the whiskey drinkers by doing that because you know i'm not going to name and shame people but there's some awful bottles out there that people have have used to put whiskey in, and you're just like Really, you know, whiskey deserves without sounding pretentious and snobby. It deserves a bit of attention. Yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's, absolutely. It's not, and, and and here, this is what this is what I said at the start. I love see those gin bottles. Love the colours. Love all that. But you, you, but to be frank, that's good for gin. Yeah, they're great for gin because yeah. gin is, it, you know, do what you know what I could go make gin. Me, me and you will go make gin tonight. We'll yeah. go make gin tonight. We'll do it. I mean, it's not the thought process, the the the, the cast management, the sipping, the tasting, the making mm-hmm. sure it's just right continuously for those for those years post post three years out of the cask, and that and and and, and that and that's post cask. When what about when we're putting it through, you know, distillation? Absolutely. Um, there's a lot more into whiskey, and, yeah. it, and it maybe deserves a little bit more. There uh, is, there is. More, no, more. I, I think I think you're absolutely right. In many ways, I think you're. Yeah. Uh, opening whiskey bottle is an occasion. It's about time. The time has gone into it. It's uh, you, you've got. It, it's beyond. I suppose with with gin, too many. It's, it's about a moment, a, a moment in time. It's made. Yeah. It's done. It's it, it's that's what it is, and it's um, and you can have it. You can have it in a bottle in store probably seven days after it was distilled, and and there you go. But with whiskey, you're going back into all minor things. So yeah, you're going back into the terroir so you're going back into the, the barley from where it's come from where the water's come from the water source everything everything is time and it goes yeah. back and it's and it starts off with with you know a few weeks in finishing off into the many months or years it's it's an original cast to the process distillation to to where it comes to many centuries and millions of years going back when you're talking about uh, maybe even peated stuff from the peat bog you've got all that history going back into it so and they're all arise from the bottle. So I think it deserves to be in something that has a respect for the amount of time that's you know got what? to that point. Samuel, there's not many people would talk like that about about whiskey. Um, you know, blatantly because I just think some people have been in the in the business for so long that it's just expected. There is a conversation that has to be had about that. And we've not had that this in the whiskey week so far about that. Let's have a bit of respect. Let's have a bit of respect for the reason why we have a whiskey festival. Let's have a bit of respect for the product, you know, and what it's all about. And actually, what better way to respect the whiskey and the liquid is to present it properly, you know, in, in, a, in a proper fashion for people to appreciate in the homes. Because it's not just for the bars and it's not just for 
PR stunts and, and yeah. newspaper clippings and shelves and stuff. It's, it's for people, you know, it's for free. Yeah. It's for people to, to purchase. And, you, you you know, it's that experience, isn't it? You know, we're, yeah. we're all sitting here. We've, we've had lots of alcohol the last couple of days, and it's that experience. It's about cracking that bottle open. Now, what we are doing with these bottles is cracking it open. We're hearing it. So I'm yeah. going to crack number two. Yeah. And number two is the five-year sherry cap. The five-year. So, again, this, this is um, uh, Great. Uh, West Cork. West Cut Liquid. So this this is the way this was produced was it's uh, about two thirds of it is uh, a five year uh, five five year sherry. So it would have been a three year, and then uh, it would have gone immediately into five year into sherry cast for five years, and then a third of it is five year old of the same sort of uh, single malt that's from West Cook. So it's a it's a it's a I suppose what you call in um, it's. Uh, what, what do you what do you call that? It's uh, vatted, I suppose. It's what yeah. you call a, a vatted malt. So you've got two two single malts from the same distillery essentially put together. So, right. so yeah, two thirds of sherry finish, one third of bourbon finish together for five, sure, those five years. Do so, you know what? We're getting the, we've got a similar undertone. Yeah. Do you know? I get the similar undertone, and it's that toffee. It's the yep. toffee. Remember we said about that salted fudge, that kind of salted fudge. Yep. Uh, but then we're getting a spice. There's a, there's a kicky kick on the nose here. You know, there's a spice which is coming through, but it's like a. Do you know what? It's like a Christmas, um, like Christmas biscuit spice. Yeah. You know, uh, you, know those wee one, you know these wee ones you get in the in the in the bags, and they're like there's a there's a million biscuits in the bag, you know, with the the icing on top and the yeah the gingerbready kind of spice. That's you know, it's like a it's not gingerbread though. It's like a kind of wee biscuit, you know, Christmas biscuit. I like that. But it's that creamy, salty, fun mm. in the undertone. So you know, going back, you, you know the, the the faint the faint fudge we had here is in here, but it's now yeah. got spice and it's got a kick. Yes, yeah, so it's and, the, and the, I love sherry. Yeah. Um, I love sherry whiskey because it gives you that depth of um, yeah, that's d- d- depth of flavour and, and, and it balances out so well. I think I think there's going to be a lot to say for the West Cook whiskey. Uh, in sherry cast in years to come because I think that that particular style it matches it really well. It it's a it's as probably Sam Sam same forty percent same forty percent. No, sorry, that, sorry, this is forty one three forty one point three percent. Yeah, forty one two to be precise. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a kick on it. Yeah, there is actually. Yeah, it, do you know what it reminds? It, I think it's um it's, this reminds me of a Highland Scotch in many ways. Uh, even though it's a triple, it's because it's got that, that you know you'd expect it from an Irish whiskey. Irish whiskey mellow. It's a, mm. it's going to be slightly reserved. This one, it gives you it gives you a, one in the shins to get you moving. It does here. It's it's surprising because I'm I was expecting okay the same liquid. What 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 can be achieved? You know, in in in, in those years, what can be achieved here? I like that. I'm like I'm liking that. Here, um, yeah. Cheers, Sam. You know, you, you get you get a glass. So we've had them all night. We we had these nine uh, drinks before us, mm. and there was a lot of it was just all cast strength, and um, or or yeah, it was all, all forty five plus, but up to sixty percent cast strength, and um, you always find one or two that you, all nine of them were really good. But in this in this in this taste, and I was expecting you know to maybe find a really good one towards the end. Hello, we're on number two, and I, and I wasn't, I just wasn't, I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> and and that's a good thing because you yeah. know you know that that's me saying that's me just being honest and going, Do you know what? what what am I expecting here? What am I getting from Gelson's? Because you know that, that this is something you're literally that that really like finding that smell. Yep, I like that. Um, you know, the taste is, and you're right. The, the t- here, the taste is good. It was a man. <laughs> Hold on, I might, I, I might have more of that. <laughs> Tell me, on the taste. Mm. We're getting like, what is this? Do you know it's quite it's it's, it's nearly a kind of 
It's nearly, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Got like a, is it, I want to say, I always get this wrong. See, when I talk about meat and cheese, I always seem to get the, the <laughs> words mixed up. But Capaccio. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. That's the meat, yes. Mm -hmm. The salted meat. Yeah. On the taste. That's really quite nice. And then some people might not get that, but some, I think an actual whiskey with that beefy kind of taste is, is very pleasant. I, I like that. You know, you, you you hark maybe to this idea of a Scottish kind of Highland. Yeah, with, with the crunch, but that that that's that that's that cream. A lot of them would have that kind of you know that saltiness as well potentially yeah. in there. I, I, I do, I like that. So that's a nice, it's a nice wee drink. That's a nice wee dram. So. Yeah, no, it's and, and again, this this was yeah a, a bit of an experiment in in many ways in terms of why not? Let's let's just do mm. it. I think yeah, I think. Uh, uh, Mark Watson, who's Eden Mills, worked worked with us as well. Worked with Johnny as well. He he was involved in the project for this five year old, in terms of in terms of getting that right. And because uh, it was a, it's an interesting one about what 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 we take the because there, there are like you said at West Court these different casts, uh, all aging sort of different casts. And it was like, yeah. right, why don't we take a little bit of this and put it with this? That that could be an idea. And then well, there it was. And <laughs> And I think there were, I think we did about two thousand bottles worldwide. I think it's a limited, it's a limited release for this. Okay. So wow. I think yeah, I think I think we. I think I think, I think this is a stand up against um, you know other five year olds. Yeah. Um, so, um, those five year olds that are in the market right now, and there's a couple there's a couple of people that have been on it already with five year olds. Um, I think for value for money, what 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 are we talking about in terms of cost for this? So you're looking around about thirty to thirty five quid. Um, that, that that's that's what we sold out there to to retailers at. And so that so far so far quid and about uh, in Ireland probably around about forty five euros. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because if anyone's unaware that basically in in Ireland the the duty is about fifty percent higher and the VATs. Three percent higher, so everything is 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 that much more. So, so for example, the duty on this will be uh, probably pushing towards well, seventy euro, whereas whereas uh, in in uh, where, where, where now in, in Northern Ireland it will be you'll be paying like forty odd quid a case duty. So th there's that much difference, and that, yeah. that that reflects in the prices. T tell me, now, Sam, I'm going to sound really. Mm. I hope it's not controversial in any respect, but but I want you to answer it as honestly as you can. Because we asked this question of someone earlier on, just because of their nationality, really. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's probably where the question came from. Look, I'm a Scotsman. You are clearly an Englishman. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are brothers, uh, uh, you know, in arms, no doubt. Yep. Um, and we are, and, and do you know what? We, 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 come from a, we come from a part of the UK specific where Irish whiskey just isn't really talked about, you know. Let's be honest; mm, we, mm. we don't talk about Irish whiskey in England, and neither do we really talk about it in, in in Scotland. You know, it's 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 missed a lot in the conversation when we talk about whiskey because Scotch is so dominant. Yeah, and it's dominant in both those countries. You know, people in England have a prestige, you know, a view of Scottish whiskey. They're like, ah, Scotch malt, give me the highest uh, number that you have there by, and yeah. uh, make sure it's cast down for I'll no drink it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. That's not cool. What's your what's your general take on the company? First of all, um, you know, led you know led led by Johnny um, in England. Is there a push now to look at these products, these Irish malts, as a push into England to say, listen, waking up, laddies, this is Irish whiskey. Let's talk about Irish whiskey. Let's get Irish whiskey out there because I think companies like yourself, it's slightly slightly worrying that you have uh, this, the two major. Branding here, um, yes, they dominate the markets here, but and, they, and they're starting to, you know, they really elsewhere. You know, the, you, when you look at America and you know, looks at parts of Asia, but I think England is one of those markets that it, it's been dominated by Scotch whiskey for so long. It, it needs to have yeah, it has, influence, you know. It, it has indeed, and uh, and the history of that is not actually because um, it was it's only during. Um, the sort of French um, phenoxyl of beetle blight uh, back back there that they actually the English got a taste of Scotch whiskey. Before that, they turned a nose up at it yeah. because they they were brandy drinkers and then yeah. the brandy the brandy dried up 
and so they they uh, switched to scotch and that's and that's where it came from but you're right though no, there's is i think part of it is that the the english whiskey tradition is only really i i'd say it's probably a century and a bit old it goes back to that before that the the upper classes drank brandy yeah and and a lot of them still do uh of course. Of course. In, in any way so so scotch has only had its place place there so whiskey in general um outside the aficionados and outside of um i suppose the, the mass of people who drink blends i think there's a lot there's a there's an open door especially for younger people that that aren't um that are interested in single malts are interested in different styles interesting craft spirits I think, it's an, I think it's an open door and and i think that companies like ourselves are, are doing well with this i think teeling to be i think teeling lead the way in in doing a lot of that work in terms of oh, making yeah. it make it make it acceptable and cool because i'd, I'd say they're they're great forerunners and they're, they're great guys that in around the london scene like um like a uh, mate of uh londoner who owns um the the uh, uh what do you call um got, got name is these two you know two bars around in around london so, but yeah he he does he does a lot of great work and they're they're, they're sort of ambassadors for irish whiskey out there that are doing good stuff and getting a name out there and uh and and it, and, it, and it really i think it's it's about generations i think the current generation so i'd say people are like under 40. You know what? I want to I want to say something. Last year, when we uh, when we launched the festival last year, and we had with 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 some great um, advertising. I think if I mean if you look at the box, I'm just going to have to say something. But if you look at the box, I wonder if I can see that. Yeah, it says mm -hmm. that about you. I mean, we're using a wee bit of lingo that people use in Northern Ireland, and there's a lot of this idea. It's like slancha, you know. It's like you know. Um, last year we had a campaign uh, slogan, and it was like. You know, it's not your, it's, it's, it's not your dad's drink. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, that that we we that we we took the vision that you know that Irish whiskey, or whiskey, but Irish whiskey, it, it's it's no longer about you know dusting and you know dusty uh, shelves. It's no longer about your dad. You know, I mean, what he would have been drinking these you know, bo you know I'm going to say boring blends, but they're not boring blends, but they're just blends. Yeah. And they're blends, or they're or they're just staple whiskies which we've been used to, mm -hmm. um, and it's. And and the conversation is about the the younger drinker. I think the majority of people within our whiskey club, um, if you were you know, would, would be under the age of uh, forty. Do you know what I mean? So that automatically stops all that malarkey about you know older folk, you know, being the the, the sole drinkers of whiskey. Um, we've got a lot of young people who are now using whiskey, um, in, in their cocktails. You know, I mean, yeah. we, we're su surprised at the amount of cocktails that are are, are now using whiskey. Um, and it's not that those um, you know old ones like the old fashions, the penicillins, and all that. It, it, it's yeah. new, fresh, funky cocktails using fruits, you know, using uh, other liqueurs to to complement the whiskey. Um, and it is. It's about getting into those scenes. You know, London is cosmopolitan to the yeah. max. It, it it brings it brings people from all cultures, all walks of life, all countries together. And if you can get it right in London and Dublin, if you can get people drinking those, you know, spirits, um, that's going to be, you know, it's very important to get that message out there. But I just think it's it's about this, um, it's about the new, it's about the new whiskies. Now, I, I've been yeah. open on the last couple of days about uh, about people just stealing old names, and I think you've been very honest, and I think we've had that conversation, me and you, me and you personally, but yeah, yeah. We've had that conversation uh, with Johnny about that heritage the, where he comes from and look some people might and i'm not sure i'm not saying that people do but some people might say mate it's an english man taking an irish name irish whiskey name and doing it think you know do, doing what he wants and try to make a buck personally i actually yeah. think you know the boys get a lot of credence actually it takes yeah. a lot it takes a lot to to put the amount of investment that he's put into the product it's a passion play for him yeah it's, i mean johnny wouldn't be uh embarrassed to say he's his family are very well to do he's not nope. wife, but it, it's a, it's nope. a case of um he's he's gone out there on his own limb and he started with the neil by himself hmm. and because he i think he's his father was on the the board of greenals but that was the end of the family association he didn't work for the, the company or whatever it was yeah. but he 
he had a a big uh, inkling for gin back before gin was a big thing. So he was back in back in a, around the same time that the, the Martin Millers and the Hendrix were being produced. Johnny was there doing his thing because I, I remember him from when I was working around London and that he would be by himself the guy that would he made the gin and he'll go to all the bars all the cool bars and do the and so you'd I'd always be coming into meetings and he'd be uh, doing a gin tasting with all the bar staff with his with the deal so I sort of knew him to nod to uh, <laughs> over the years things like that he's, he's choppy he's choppy but I think yeah I think I think you know I would just stick up for you know if there was any criticism weighed in whatever which way I just think that there's you know use the name right get the name yep. right this idea of having the distillery uh, is super. It's just super. Have it, you know, pursuing that I, 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 as a uh, as yeah. That's the, that's, the, that's the that's the end point. And I think, but, yeah. but um, also, I think there's there's a, I think there's something to be said for not being embarrassed about being a bottler and a blender because that was what the majority yeah. of whiskey companies were: Scottish, Irish, whatever. That's what they yeah. were um, back back in back in the, the sort of um, 1900s and the 1800s. People would, uh, White Mackay being another one, started off as, as bottlers and blenders. They, they would go and buy from different distilleries, and that would, yeah. that's what would keep the distilleries going. The distilleries would churn stuff out, and they would go and, and pick up and, and blend and create bottlings, and that's the way it works, and that's how, that's, that's how it works. I, I liken it a bit to, it's a bit like the, the Brill Building songwriting thing, because back in the day, there never used to be singer-songwriters. There used to be people that sat in, sat in the... Rooms in the in New York, diddling away all day, exactly. m- making making great songs, and they'll find uh, find someone like Ingelbert Humperdinck could sing them great, and uh, and that's how and that's how uh, that's there's how no, there's yeah, and there should be no shame in it. Look, some of the best whiskey um, that we know about has come from bonders and bottlers over over the years. We know that, you know, and and if it wasn't for those bottlers and bonders, no offense, some of those distilleries just wouldn't have existed exactly. either. So, um, they don't have capacity to do what they were trying to do. Um, and do you know what? It's nice to see, refreshingly, it's nice to see some people actually just come out and say, we don't don't want to do anything other than being a bottle and bonder. Mm. We want to go back to that tradition of how to do it properly, not just yeah. not just walk up to we, we Jimmy, who owns a distillery, and say, listen, give me all your barrels because I'm just going to pour it into my bottles and yeah. I'm going to just sell it with a label. But actually making the effort about blending on themselves. Absolutely. You know, so the, maturation and management. The, fi- the five year being a case in point. That was right. What 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 have we got sitting there? Let's let's have mm. a look at let's have a look and uh, we'll get Mark and Johnny went down there and worked with John the guys and and uh, came up with a five year old as a release and that was the yeah, abs- hyper traditional way old way of doing it. It's a yeah. cl- classic classic vatted malt. We are moving on to number yeah. three. Pot this still. Is a new release pot still, yeah. Sing, sing a pot still. So this is yeah, this is the the first Westcott pot still. Uh, again, triple distillation, uh, matured in two hundred liter bourbon casks for three years. So yeah, this this is uh, just about released now. Yeah, yep, I think I think we we're selling it online with a couple of our stores, and it's just been released. I think the first ones uh, have just hit um, a couple of wholesalers uh, this month. In Northern Ireland, okay. So, so brand new. So this this is a yeah quite exciting one for me because it, I I haven't taste, only tasted this two and a half weeks ago myself. So this is uh, fantastic. But uh, yeah, I I think this is um absolutely stunning. And we, I take it we're just in bourbon cask at this point. Yeah, yeah. Straight bourbon cask. Again, yeah. there are other experiments going on now, but this is yeah. uh, first this mm-hmm. first came to maturation earlier this year. Are we second fill, third fill bourbon casks? Do we know? No, it's second fill. So, so uh, by that I mean used bourbon cast, not yeah, not, just a use, just, just yeah, just, used, used bourbon cast. Okay. Yeah, it's got okay. a good nose again. Yeah, and it's a different nose too. It's a bit different to the single malt. It's totally uh, different. That's different, and that, and that's what you should expect from. It's actually a fifty-fifty mash bill. Really? Yeah. Good. That's good. Good to know. I'm just reading. We've got a couple of comments there, but it's um, Mar- Martian. I want to say that his name right. Hopefully, uh, Martian um, says number two was his favourite so far. And then Michael O'Donnell is just saying, "Look, the history talk and honest chat about the business workings is great. Sam, you really know your stuff. 
thanks for your honesty and appreciate it. No, no worries. <laughs> no, I do as well, because I think it's important that when, when, when people come on here and they want to have a discussion, and they're certainly part of the festival, that, that they are honest and they are, and they take the feedback and, and we look at the, you know, we look at the, 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 the products in a, in a very open and transparent way because, you know, there's there's a lot of people who can fluff things. You know what I mean, Samuel? People can fluff it, you know? Yeah, and, and I don't, it'll always catch up here at some point. So I don't think there's any, any miles in doing that. I, I, I can understand why people might be fearful of putting something themselves out there to be shot at or whatever it might be. But um, so, so they might tell a couple of tales in order to get them through. But yeah. I, I think you, someone will find out eventually. And, and so you, you might as well just, and I said, there's, there's no shame, I think, in being, yeah. being a bottle and a blender. And I think that, but that's something that if you understand the history and tradition of, of all whiskey, then you'd understand that. And it wouldn't be a problem because it's, because that's what it is. But I think there's yeah. a, there's a little yeah, bit. People, you know, people tend to forget, you know, people tend to forget that the two biggest, I mean, the, the, the certainly the two biggest bottle and bonders in the, in the UK and Ireland were um, Gilby's and uh, Barry Brothers and Rudd uh, mm. would have been the two biggest um, bottle and bonders, weren't they? Uh, for, 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 uh, for, 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 for whiskey, both Scotch and Irish whiskey. Um, you know, Gilby's did the whole thing where they were spirit uh, driven. Uh, well, first of all, port driven, weren't they? The port uh, they were they were fortified wine driven. They went into spirits, uh, and then I mean I've got I've got a bottle of Gilby's from the nineteen forties potentially from Canada, you know, and and you know that that's you know that, that's what they were doing. They were taking they were taking a uh, whiskey from all parts of the world, you know, uh, and and bottle bottling it and bonding it. Um, Barry Bros and Rod, some of their stuff, you know, dating back again hundreds of years, mm. it's just great, and they're still doing it. Ber yeah. At least Barry Bros and Rod, they're still doing it, you know. And I know they've they went into partnership with the likes of Glen Rothis and other such like yeah, uh, yeah, and stuff. But uh, and you and you tend to find actually now some of these other blenders are buying up their own distilleries because they're like, ah, our blend, their blends are that good that they've made yeah. enough money and they can go and buy their own distillery now and and. And do their own thing rather than having to go and source, which yeah. is interesting. Yeah, I think it's interesting. But I, I think that I mean, you look at say one of the coolest brands of recent years, Compass Box. They brought back that tradition. Absolutely, and, and they, they, they are some absolute cracking stuff. There's some amazing, really you know, that's, experimental that's things. Cult that's cult stuff, you know. That's mm. really cool. I, we were talking about uh, Douglas Lane's other. We we did a tasting mm. on on Friday with the Timorous Beastie, the 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 Highland Malt uh, blend, and and they have these great core range um you know products looking at blends single malt blends no no grain involved from from those different areas and and literally the six areas of scotland um i just think that i just think you, you know sometimes people do they get kind of get lost in this uh, nostalgia about you know, having to have the distillery but i think what's important what what has to be said is be the bottom and bonder. Be that if you want to be that, because no one's going to, and no one should criticise that, because it is yeah. an important, integral part of the, the industry. But just do not, just do not, please do not just grab a label off the shelf, yeah, put it on your bottle, buy some liquid and put it in it and pretend, just pretend, you know what I mean, that, uh, that, that it's anything other than that. That's my personal opinion. And that's because, actually, I want to know that people are, people care about what's going on, you know what I mean? You know, so like I know that I know that um, that that distillery up in uh, the, the north coast produces great whiskey. I know that. Yeah, I do know that. I also know that the the distillery uh, down in um, I also know the distillery down in um, the the, the kind of Cooley, um area produces really great whiskey, um, and yet when people just go to these places and just buy the liquid and just put a label on it and then sell it as their own, it's isn't it's, it's, it's not that it's embarrassing, but it's just like, come on. These distilleries should also just be putting the best stuff that they can out as well themselves rather than just yeah. selling on to random people. But if you've got if you've got the intention, and I think, you know, I'd, when I spoke to Johnny before, the intention was to – now, I, correct me if I'm wrong, just in case I'm wrong here, Samuel, but his intention was to have a distillery in Northern Ireland. 
was, uh, but then uh, there was a vote about four years ago that uh, that might have uh, changed a few things around that. Just yeah, just 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 a, that's just a real a... problem. See that vote? That's a real problem for 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 the decision making when it comes to some. Mm-hmm. And look, I I accept that. I accept that it's yeah. not not it's not in his hands in that respect, you know, because you've got to be looking at what's. You know what's realistic for the business. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there are lots of things. I mean, without getting into specifics about what happened, uh, even things like um, geographic indicators, GIs, of what Irish whiskey will be, it's likely there's no guarantee that there'll be an island of Ireland um, uh, oh, stipulation on that because it, that involves a lot of agreement, uh, and it, it and, and that can cause problems. Um, so it remains to be seen what happens around that, but things like that you've got to take into consideration. Um, you you do you right. do, and and listen, we're just that number three whiskey was great. So we're, we're look we're new new release pot still fifty fifty mash bill on it. Um, and Michael makes a good point. Can't believe it's only three years old because yeah. there's no burn or bad kick. Just a nice anise peppery finish. I was going to say, and Michael, my tasting notes were quite specific. Um, the smell on it, the smell on it is really fragrant. It's like it's like florally, you know. It's like it's it's like um, it's like a meadow. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And and then the the taste of licorice, but licorice all sorts. Do you remember that licorice all sorts? But you know the ones that had more licorice than the sweet on it. That's what I get. That really, you know, the the, the big licorice, the ball yeah. one with the no, no, no. on it. The ones where you just give them a lick before you ate them. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> Not the one with too much uh, too much of the, 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 the other bit on it. Dennis, uh, man, I'm late. Must be Dutch time. Dennis, you're never late for whiskey. You can't be late for whiskey. You know what I mean? It's always whiskey time. There's not a time, you know, there's not There's not a, there's not a you know what I mean? So at least look, you're here. The festival yeah. is just continuous. So don't be worrying about the festival. It's always on. But the fact that we have uh, Gelson's in right now is just that is just they have their time slot. It's two hours of, of them talking about it. So I want to ask a couple of things about yeah, and I hope I hope you're allowed to do it. But you know we've got we've got the parent company, and we've got you know yeah. then we've got the Gelson's, but we also have two other kind of whiskey kind of parts to the to the to the company. Am I right? Uh, two or three, so I mean, two, two or three, yeah, so, and two, two okay. more, more no, actually. So, so uh, uh, we, so inside the, the big company Hailwood, uh, there, there are. So we, there is a an English whiskey company, uh, with a d- d- distillery in Blackpool called Bank Hall, wow. and uh, and that that's, that's a crazy distiller. There is an American guy that's making English English bourbon, effectively, right. in, in Blackpool. Drives, drives around the Harley. Yeah. Nuts. Right. Then, we, then we have uh, a Welsh distillery, Abba Falls, which um, I think later on this year, their, their first whiskey has been, their first whiskey being released. They've been, that's nearly three years maturation come to, wow. come to the point now. In Scotland, uh, there's the, in Leith, Leith Crab- County. Crabbies, Crabbies. Crabbies, Crabbies, Crabbies distillery. So again, that whiskey, that whiskey will wow. be, that, that the first Crabby produced new whiskey will be produced uh, later on this remember year. Crab, remember Crabby's? Gee whiz. Man. Yeah. So 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 John Crabby. So the the only thing that survived with the John Crabby Whiskey Company because John Crabby is one of the original um, blenders of, of whiskey. So he, yeah. he was with a um, founder of North British Distillers. He was uh, one of the pioneers of whiskey blending. He learned it off his mother, who was a tea importer and a tea blender. It would bl- it would blend uh, tea together to create different batches. And um, so th- th- that uh, whisk company was very, very successful and it was eventually sold on it. It was part of um, Glenmorangie. But the only thing that survived of it was the ginger ale. Yes. Because it was a big, big business that sold lots of different soft drinks and, yeah. and spirits, things like that. And, uh, and so, so the only thing that survived of, um, of, of Crabby name was the ginger ale. So Glenmorangie, uh, Glen uh, only the distillery and everything else that and the the whiskey label actually died away the last one was produced i think back in 74 the year of my birth that's an eight-year-old and uh showing your age there right yeah indeed in, indeed so that's an eight-year-old that's the last whiskey produced of, of that length and then uh john halewood uh founder of halewood actually bought the crabby 
company from Glen Berangie back in the early 90s. Yeah. And then uh, took forward the ginger ale and produced the, the alcoholic ginger beer, which is... The still, ginger beers were great. Yeah. The ginger beers were great. Yeah, still, still, still going great guns to this day. And it was actually going back through the archives because obviously you, when, you, when you buy a company like that, you get buildings and archives and things like that. It's going through the archives that Blue and Hale discovered that um, actually there's a lot more going on here than just the ginger ale. And yeah. so therefore the project to, to uh, revive the whiskey side of the business came about. That started about five years ago. And, and where, where, where's that Where's that distillery being based in Scotland? Where's it at? Leith. Leith. Exactly, the port of Leith. Yes. So, uh, yeah, so it, it's very interesting. It's, a, it's, it's been a, an interesting project because uh, they're doing it on two sites because the first site, uh, someone discovered that there were, it was a site of archaeological interest. And so while that was being done, they... What they, a pain in the hole. But yeah, they, they built a second site to... To basically start producing whiskey yeah. while we were while we're carrying on building around the main site, which is now being completed. So it's finishing difficult, but yeah, we're back on the main site now, building all that. So that's so you're going to. I mean, I'm I'm just intrigued by that because you're going to compete against. There's another there's another wee distillery now in the in Leith as well down on the yeah. dock, um, and which is down there, which is great. But am I right in saying? And I don't know whether or not you know the answer to this one. But the crabbies, the, you you guys have released some crabbies uh, mm -hmm. whiskey. Uh, am I right in saying that you stole all that product from McAllen? <laughs> it's not stolen. Not not no. So no, uh, I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. No, so so the, the story, the, the um, interesting guys that someone about 25, 30 years ago at McAllen decided to try and make some peated whiskey. Just yep. do the hell of it. And then uh, I think they either lost their job or it didn't see the light of day, whatever it was. But McCallum were just embarrassed about these casks hanging around for many years. But they're, they're absolutely great whiskey in them. And uh, and so um, Dave Brown, who was um, who came on board as the sort of the MD at the um, Crabby Distillery, he uh, Brownie actually went off and found these casks. He'd heard of them and got hold of these casks, and, and that's where the the original crabby. I think I've got one up on the shelf there, thirty year old up at the top, Brilliant. right, right, right behind me, way up on the, way up on the, on the here, shelves there. Prestigious uh, looking, prestigious looking bottles again. You're, you're not scrimping on no, these uh, on these releases, son. Uh, absolutely not. So, so yeah, that that was um, it's an interesting release. So yeah, so we bought those casks. Um, so effectively, yeah, Peter McAllen, yeah. very very rare at that, and um, and. The equivalent McAllen's are, were going for thousands of bottles. So it's 25, 30 year old McAllen's thousands of bottles. But again, we will take we took the attitude of um, why do that? There's no inherent reason okay. why not. And let's let's okay. make it affordable for most people. So they're, they're mainly sold for a few hundred quid. They were, yeah. Each in that. So fair, fair play, absolutely fair play. Um, no, I'm I'm excited. So you know we're. we're we're thinking longer term. We've, we've got long term projects. We have got distillery in Wales. Yeah. Distillery in England. Yeah. A distillery in Scotland. Yeah. A distillery coming in Ireland. Yes. We're going to have, am I right in saying, I think there's going to be some sort of magical blend at some point? Well, there, there, there already is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 bit being, being worked on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good. Good. Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, you, you, you call it um, somewhere between the home nations and the triple crown or something, wouldn't you? But to win it, but I don't know how, how you name it. But yeah, there's already that experiment going on, then to taking whiskey from from uh, yeah, yes. four, four different four different areas of the well, British and Irish Isles. There's no harm to be, you know, I mean, as long as like you abide by all these IWAs, you know, I mean, and SWAs and EWAs and WWAs and whatever, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. associations of the whiskey who want to have rules as long as we're abiding by the rules and we're and we're those rules are are, are helping the the are helping the distilleries and the brands as well as long as we're doing that and we're within the confines i think we need to be experimental um i want to move on to number 10 year old number four here so the 10 year old i want to move on to that uh i'm excited but here, Sam, you're entertaining me tonight. We're having, yep. we're, I'm just having too much crack. Um, <laughs> you, you be too much fun. Um, yeah, 
pure smell on that. So tell me about tell me about this one. Where, so where we're that? Ten, ten year old. So we've got, we're now going through to the, the next age, uh, the next um, region. So we, we've tasted um, essentially um, West Cork whiskey up until now. And this is a coolie whiskey. So we're going to taste two coolies. So this is a uh, interesting. It's a, it's the same sort of cask batch. So this was this is the straight bourbon cask, ten year old coolie. Do you know what? There's nothing to be ashamed about because Cooley Liquid is, oh, pro it's, it's it's probably, one of the, probably one of the most underrated whiskies on the planet. Probably one of the most yeah. underrated spirits ever. And do you know what? It's only, and it really is only Irish whiskey drinkers who then go Cooley, Cooley. Yeah, Cooley, Cooley. Because it's just not, I mean, Steve, oh, actually, no, hold on. What I should put is the caveat is that a lot of the Cooley Liquid went into a lot of blends and went abroad. But it, mm. it the single malt coolie. I mean, you cannot go wrong. You can't. No, yeah. it. No, I mean, yeah. it's very it's, hard to it's very hard to ruin a good a good whiskey, and this is a good. No, whiskey. It, it's it's a it's a god knows, and, and I think, that, I think what, what, we, we um this is only a limited release. I think we did a I think round about four hundred bottles of it. I think uh, roughly roughly there or thereabouts because I think it was. Sebastian's asking a good question. What, what, why, why, why not more than 40 yeah. percent uh it's essentially down to what's left um what we could get out the cast because we couldn't uh it's essentially we couldn't elongate it out um to to more than we wanted to get at least 400 bottles out there and we couldn't do it uh, essentially um so yeah so we, we would have done if we if we could have done but we we, we couldn't get them days otherwise I think I think that's a you know again that's an honest answer. There's a lot of people who who would say, do you know what? We need to get mass amounts of alcohol out there. We're going to water it down to forty percent, blah blah. But if we're trying to get the consumer to try the liquid, yeah. and we want to get as much out at that point, forty percent is okay. Forty percent is what this tastes good at forty percent. Yeah, it, it I know. Does. I, mean, it I, does. I know as well, Samuel, that if this was at forty six percent or fifty two percent. It would be great. Also, it would be great. Also, it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it would be. But we, yeah, forty percent. This is this is a very, very, very good. And here, very drinkable. I mean, unfortunately, that I, you know, if we weren't, if we didn't have more to go, and I, and I had to drink for an hour six days solid, I, I would, I would definitely, I would definitely have more of this in my mouth because it's it, it is it is lovely. And again, what what's the price point in this one? What's the so, so this again, very, very reasonable. Uh, it's around about uh, 35, 40 quid. Oh, my goodness, so, that's so, yeah, good. 40 quid. So, that, that was another one of the reasons that, especially looking to Ireland, too, where if you go to car strength, you are paying a whopping around mm. more, more duty, and it, and it sort of impacts it. And we, we wanted to make sure it could get because what we're quite keen to do, and Johnny's quite going to do, is making sure there's an affordable ladder of, of whiskey at, at, at a yeah, yeah. decent price, and so. And so, for, and so for, rather than having a, a hundred bottles of say forty six percent, which have to be at a certain price, it's <laughs> let's get get a few hundred and at a, a higher price than they'd be available for most people to be able to pick up. I think if we're, I think if we're, um, you know, I, th I think if we're being honest, you know, those kind of prices is what people should be paying mm -hmm. for whiskey. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, 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 uh, it disheartens me sometimes when I look at some whiskies and they're just so unaffordable. Uh, you know, I just can't afford them, and it's just like yeah, it breaks, yeah. it breaks my heart. So it's nice to know that we've got yeah. whiskey that, that is achievable. Yeah, yeah. and there's, there's there's a lot there's a lot of that. I mean, there's I mean we, we still know. I mean, it, it still sells, and and I think we're still like where like, whiskies are going for ridiculous amounts of money. Still, they are, but uh, you, you'd 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 hope that whiskey's there to be drunk really and yeah. not just because you, you don't spend five thousand pounds a bottle of whiskey because someone will pay ten thousand for it in five or ten years time but that 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 is that is part of it uh, that is part of the industry but inside that there's also an, an ability to release whiskeys which are just as good but make them affordable and these yeah. are some great comments. I just want to pull them up here. First of all, Jane Bankhead is uh, really, you know, singing praises here. Really enjoying your detailed information, Sam, about the brand. Um, Sebastian's wife likes it. That's good. <laughs> big, big, you know, that's big thumbs up there. Um, it is 
probably better than a 10 year 10 year bush i would probably say so i mean i, I am a i am a bush fanatic um and i would say that it is it is orchard fruit it is big green apples um and definitely we're getting you know citrus 100 percent all, all about here dennis thank you so you know as a as a dutch whiskey ambassador to irish um shame we don't get it there yet uh this is a, an example that irish is is more than average it is yeah. more than average. it is good yeah um and look sam he needs to, he needs to look there you go that's the connection yeah. you made there sam. Absolutely. yeah see, yeah Dennis, Dennis you guys, get, you guys get yourself get sorted no um get a room after the festival get yourselves a, you know get yourselves sorted um I, listen this is what this festival is about it's, like, we want a community of people you know talking to each other being friends with each other um and and whiskey's good for doing that isn't it um good at bringing people together it, it, this that that's that's what it's intended to do and like, yeah. a chat and and having some uh, looking at things from different perspectives because uh, yeah, I, I think i mean I, i'm I mean, one thing i always think of it i'm loath to sort of criticize anyone else's whiskey because there's usually someone who likes it and so on and so yeah. there's a reason the reason why it's all produced and someone put a lot of love and care into all of it so and 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 also, if people do things for their own reasons, I can understand why people will market their whiskies in a certain way and talk about it in a certain way because it makes sense for them. Uh, what we're doing is very much we're trying to make sure that this is a premium whiskey brand that is affordable and isn't isn't so exclusive that only ten people in the world can afford a bottle of it or whatever it is. So, so every, everything that does come from that DNA because Johnny's idea isn't to be. Right, just selling it to five chaps that have loads of money around the world. He wants to make sure that this can get to loads of people because he, because that that's what's in his heart to do. Yeah. Tell, tell me this. I mean, in terms of his passion, I mean, he has a lot of passion. Like, but yeah. he's been. You know, he thankfully he's come to Belfast. He's come to Belfast a couple of times. You know, we've yeah. we've, we've, we've met him a couple of times, and um, you know, it, do you think? I mean. Do you think it's just? I mean, is is it these these projects? If 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 Johnny's not there or Johnny's not leading them, are there other people there who have got the same enthusiasm for, the, um, for these projects? No, I know. I'd I'd say he's he's a hundred percent vital and core for it. I don't think he 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 uh, he has the backing of the Herald CEO and the Herald MD and the Herald Board and everyone to go pursue these ideas and everything because it was a. Uh, I think, Clearly, I mean, if if someone creates Whitley Neal, you think they've got a few ideas about what might work. Yeah. In the, so, so, so no, he's, no, he's got he's got, got credibility the there. He's got the yeah. pedigree there, and, uh, absolutely. But, uh, uh, but I think in terms of insight and everything else, and and the, the, for him, it's a legacy thing. It's about his family. It's about yeah. It's about um what they're about, and uh, and making sure people understand their history and and bring it forward to this day. So, absolutely. I mean, he's he's. He's as fascinated with the history of his family as as uh, and then producing great liquid. It, it, being part of that tradition, as you said, now he's just discovered that it, it goes back in terms of whiskey making to 1730s and and in the Crumber region with the riddles. You think so? That that's connection. Yeah. He's fascinated about making those connections and and then and then the legacy and the that he actually he's almost a custodian of, and that, that's a lot of it. Well, that's it. He is. He's definitely that. Michael O'Donnell. Michael O'Donnell. Where are you actually from? Because he's asking where he can buy the ten-year-old. But I think better to know where he's based and whether or not we could. We yeah. Could so, so my, Michael, let, let, let me know where. Because where, where are you based, Michael? Yeah. Because that 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 would be, and that's good that he wants to purchase it. I think that's yeah. really good because this is good. This is a good whiskey. You know, I'm 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 going to be very apologetic. This number five one. Yeah, I wonder if I can do that. This number five. Is the twelve-year-old rum cask? Yeah. Now, son, we've had it. We've had it. We've had a rum cask today. It was my. It was my. It was my, my own festival bottling. Uh, this better not be as good. Is all I'm saying. Is <laughs> <laughs> no, well, actually, one of the reasons I put this forward is whiskey to shame. You know? <laughs> no, no, one of the reasons I put this forward because there, there are three. There's a port and there's a sherry cask as well uh, yeah. in this, which are they're all they're they're all uh, coolies. Originally, they they were coolie bourbon casts, matured to twelve years of age, and then uh, probably three or four months on average uh, in a different 
finish cast to bring out the difference, and they were all vastly different. And and the rum one for me is is the one of the more interesting ones out of all of them. Uh, as a personal preference, the one I most um, for myself is the port cast, but that's me. But I think the rum one's more interesting one that's doing different things. Uh, so Michael, uh, right. You can actually, right, so, so it's, it's, it's near there. So, um, w- without being, uh, w- w- without trying to be favorites to whoever it is, I'll tell you what you can do. You can, you can buy it online. Uh, one of our, uh, the event yeah. Can them, yeah. If, eventually they'll, they'll have it because I think I've actually got a spreadsheet of who's buying this stuff because we, yeah, we're, we're, uh, have it. yeah, we, yeah we just, we just shipped out the first, um, the first uh, few um, cases of that into into Northern Ireland last week, so um, so they don't don't have to go out to the individual ones. But if you want to buy it online, uh, there's a there's a site called the Drop Store, and uh, if you put in Sam Ten, I'll give you ten percent off. That's my own personal ten percent off. Uh, a site called the Drop Store. There you go. You're getting hold on. You're getting discounts here with Sam. <laughs> Absolutely right. brilliant. Brilliant. Drop, drop store all, drop store all one word and you, you put in um it's my yeah my personal discount code and they're 10 percent off sam 10 sam 10 look at that you yeah you get it yes that, sorry sam you, is that sam 10 i'm going to use that every day to buy stuff from drop store <laughs> 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 Sam, Sam, Sam 90. You don't know what you've no, done. No, no. You don't know what you've done. No, no Jack. I, 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 unfortunately not. Unfortunately it's Sam not. 11 <laughs> next week. <laughs> uh, Sam 90. Sam 90. That's golden. Here, Sam. It is. Uh, yeah, Sam, this, uh, this, uh, this is good. Sam, this is very yeah, good. So, yeah, the 12 rod because I, I think this one the reason I put it for is because I, I think it's one of the more interesting ones. It's there's not many things that are like it. Uh, in terms of that, I can tell it's like the massive banana, is it? Good? Yeah, I absolutely I think it, it's incredibly interesting and and I think it's got a really it, complex it's, flavor too. It's, it's, it's more specific, but it's, it's, this, it's, the, it's the foam banana, it's the mm. tea banana rather than the ripe banana or the you know, just you know, getting to that. You know, you know that kind of funky stage banana. This is quite a, it's quite a fresh, you know, sweetie banana. Very, very you know, very, very yeah. approachable. Um, I like that. It's got here. You can, you can, you can go a little bit deeper and 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 bring out some, you know, some green fruit in there as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a, uh, it, it, I think it's interesting to put it next to the uh, the ten year old essentially because it came from, the, the, it's the same basis. Mm. It's. Um, it's that freshness, that that grassy freshness you yeah. get in it. It's it's almost like it's um, in some ways it's dialed the age of the whiskey down a little bit because you know it's. I could say this. You could put that to a nose and say, you could tell someone, oh, that's a nine year old compared to the ten year old, and someone say, yeah, that's absolutely right because it's got the same thing, but it's got that yeah. freshness to it. But so what, an, what those rum casts do? I mean, you know. What those rum casts, I mean, we, we, as I say, we had a we had our uh, cast strength, uh, which is a which is a you know liquid from the northern distillery, uh, the, the 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 north distillery, um, is you know is what a twelve year old cast strength rum cask finish um, from the Appleton Estate, um, so we know where the cask is coming from, mm. uh, and it's and it's a cask that's been repurposed, i.e., cut about you know cut up and then remade into into a firkin, as it were. Um, and it and 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 and, it, and it's full of those you know Caribbean flavors. We are getting, we're getting more, yeah, of that kind of banana, but that uh, you know that kind of apple in there as well, that mm. orchard fruit. Uh, but we're also getting on the taste, just this smooth cream. Yeah, just, yeah. But here it is enveloping my mouth. It's still there. It hasn't gone away. It's not. It's not. Um, it's not dissipating. No, I mean. Yeah, no, it's. It's, I think it's, it's a phenomenal one. I, 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 really I, 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 I love, I love, love all the three of them. As I said, the port personally, that's my favorite because I, I'm a big fan of port finishes. But yeah. 
But yeah, I, 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 absolutely. I mean, yeah. So yeah, Thomas, absolutely right. Um, yeah, Dublin whiskey live. It went, it went, went down really, went down really well. Um, uh, do you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm sure we could manage it at some, some point because yeah, like, I'm probably being told that whiskey's going to, going to here, going to there. I'm going to go it. Sam, Sam's going to go. Sam's Sam's going to take a wee walk over to Germany and start handing out. But uh, we we look. This whiskey festival is uh, reaching all parts. We've got we've got whiskey literally has gone out all over the world uh, for for this Fantastic. festival, and it, and and what it does for your brands is, is is important, Sam, because actually your brands might not be in those countries, and yeah. some people will be like, oh, it might be hard to get those brands. Yes, true that at the moment, but I think look, the the the, the world is a very small place. You know, it's a very small place, and once we start, you know, getting the the, the right types of licenses to send alcohol to different places. Do you know what I mean, yeah, you know, and and it is happening. You know, things are breaking down. You know, barriers are breaking down. You know, um, for 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 this to happen, uh, what kind of rum uh, and how long did you finish it? Uh, not so much rum in the nose, but smooth and typical dark rum complex palate is so nice. Wouldn't recognise rum straight away. I don't think that's what I said. I don't think you were getting what we spoke about earlier, which was Caribbean kind of spices and and the you know and the toasty. Uh, the, the, the toasted uh, coconut, that kind of stuff earlier on that we're talking about. And in fact, did we even mention with Brandon? But that's what I was getting. And that's, I just had to go nose it again. But we are getting those great, yeah, you know, those great bananas and stuff. But on the, on the, on the taste, on the palate, super. Yeah. You know, yeah. And something you expect from, something you expect from a good whiskey, which has had the, the, the perfect opportunity to be in a rum uh, barrel. Uh, perfect. That's a perfect marriage. I always do believe that, that the rum, you know, rum casts whiskey so you know, so much. You know? Yeah, they do, and it's an unusual. It's an unusual one because, um, yeah, I think you you starting to see a, a bit more about it because I think rum's getting. It's almost this um, the respect that rum has now, or is getting more and more. Is mm. it more and more people saying, well, why not? When they use that cast because um, it was yeah the, the 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 less famous Dave Stewart that. Really, start, start pulling rum casts in with um, Balvenie, mm. uh, and and uh, yeah, and that that was um, that was a, was a big marker in there in terms of bring, bringing that forward, and, uh, and I think that as a, as a direction to go in is a, a you know, really the, good the, one. The, the thing about the Irish whiskey and 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 the Scotch whiskey and those types of casks is that unfortunately that sometimes the the smokiness of the Scotch whiskey. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. can sometimes can you know be affected. The the Irish whiskey because it really doesn't have that. It, mm. It's it is it somehow manages to. I think personally, I think Irish whiskey goes into those rum casks. Literally, just goes let me out. Starts starts going into the wall. You know, gets drunk itself and comes back into the barrel. And just goes. You know what? It's rum. You know, it's all it's just happy days. And yeah. it's sitting there on a beach, you know, laid out, you know, <laughs> on on the on the on the fumes of the rum. So good for 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 Irish whiskey. Yeah. Whereas I think think completely Scotch agree. whiskey misses, you know, it just misses it. Maybe lacks that character that the Irish whiskey has with the with the rum. Um, I am a big fan of this. You know, it's. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I think it's I think you're good. right. I think I think that there's certain stars. With, um, Lighter styles, Highland styles um, of Scotch whiskey will take rum well. Other ones, absolutely, they'll overpower it, it, it and, you'll, and it's almost you almost fight against yourself in, in many ways. But I think you're right. Irish whiskey and, and rum is it's probably one that's going to be hopefully in the future. A few more people start looking at that as a as a way forward. Michael is loving it. Michael is loving your whiskey. That's good. It's good. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Well done, Michael. <laughs> Forty-five. <laughs> That's a lot of whiskeys to drink in one day. In, so indeed. I thought I thought doing fifteen today was a lot. Like I'm, try, I'm trying to limit. <laughs> um, you know, you, you you have to have you have to have limitations. You can't just. Be, Although I did, you know, what I did do. We, we did do the Irish Whiskey Awards, and we, I don't know how many we tasted that day. But we had a, a couple of our whiskey club members did the whole tasting. I know that that's a hell of a lot of whiskeys in one day to, to mm -hmm. evaluate. It's not just, it's not that you're know, just drinking it. You're you're trying to dissect them, and um, so it's a lot like 
But uh, I'm looking forward to this. So, so this last one here. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is this is what we're this yeah. is what we're this is what we're waiting for, is it? You know, yeah, the, the fifteen. So, so yeah, I, I absolutely apologies to um to those who didn't get one because essentially this is this isn't actually released yet. I think we sh again the first one shipped last week, and I managed to get get a bottle because it's um yeah bureaucracy head office and all the rest of trying to get the bottle out the out of the case when uh, when people yeah. people aren't. aren't well, there aren't samples. We should have just so. taken the whole case. We should have just gone the whole case. That's what we should have done. Well, I'm, um, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 there aren't many of them. So, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's an uh, it's interesting, interesting arrangement. But we got, we've got essentially for UK and Ireland and actually the whole of Europe, we've got around about um, 400 bottles, I think, of the 15 sherry. So, wow. so. So not a lot, and um, I, I think this this is it's going to be. I, I think this is, this is one where I'm I'm going to try and get hold of them and, and buy a couple myself when it, when it comes out there because I think this one's going to be uh, a bit of a classic because I I love the 15 straight bourbon cast we did uh, three years ago. Yeah, this is this is the same batch. This has spent uh, 14 years in ex bourbon casts, and then precisely two years and seven months in uh Oloroso hogs wow i reckon that once and then yeah john, john donnelly's asking did i get number six possibly not john i look are you, no, are you john john, 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 are, you still, john are you still standing john he might not have got it but do you know what we're going to do anyone who didn't get the number six in their box i, I, I will personally drive around to your house or, or post it tomorrow morning because i it, it turned up i actually uh, have I we'll sort them. Them. we'll sort them out, Samuel. Don't worry. We will sort them out. Uh, we will get them. We've we've still got a couple of these beautiful bottles that we can utilise to get out to people. And uh, it's it's uh, you know it's it, it's it's just one of those things, Sam. And see the end of the day, you know, yeah. it's not a big deal. You know, we've, uh, we've got it, some crack. You know what I mean? And, and uh, uh, can, absolutely. Uh, so, so in this, basically, everyone, everyone's had two whiskeys that. Uh, no one's probably tasted before in the pot still and then this yeah. and then this 15 this 15 sherry um yeah there's been uh, yeah a couple bottles of 15 sherry going about that johnny had made up since um since uh, yeah whiskey live last year end of last year because it, it was going to be new release but it got delayed and delayed and so it's now it's now only we're now ready to bottle and send it early this month and so we've, we've it's ready now but i think this is uh Oh, it, it's those who can taste it. Just have, have a nose in the taste, and I'll stop talking. <laughs> oh, here, Dennis is getting emotional. He's he's saying, "Wow, it's good." And Tom, my next door neighbor, is apparently liking it also. That's good, Tom. I'm liking that. I'm liking the fact you're liking it. Good, good man. Here, so we're, do you know what we're getting? We're getting that great. You know, we're getting the great uh, that great spice that we had earlier on. Mm. You know, we're getting. But it, but it was actually, it's, it's actually more of a mellow nose. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't expect, I was actually expecting it to be hard hitting and and you know like, you know, very 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 uh, fast and the frequency, you know, uh, of, of those uh, of those uh, of those flavors in my nose. But I'm not getting that. I'm actually getting a really mellow spice, which is really nice. Yeah. And it, that's extremely approachable. And it's just like walking up. I like the smell of that. Mm. Oh, oh, hold on. So this is the first one out of your of your out of your six that has managed to to wrap itself up into the top of my mouth. So yeah, that that it's, it's that like the fifteen was the fifteen bourbon cast was beautiful. Um, Two thousand three Bush Mills, beautiful whiskey. The extra nearly two and a half years in sherry. It's just oh, it's it's given it a body that's it's incredible. it's fine. here it's well rounded, but there's like a it's like a, it's like having a you know one of those like chocolate sweets in your mouth that you know it's like a cream you know like a cream sweet in your mouth but you you bite into the chocolate mm. but it's not creamy enough just to fall into your teeth. It's it, it, you still have to put a bit of purchase on it and it kind of just softens into the teeth, you know. It's that type of feel 
the the the, the whiskey is just draining into the into the tongue, you know, at the back of the tongue and and into the and into the the lower part of the cheeks. I really like that. Um, Dennis says, "Story, write me up for a few bottles, please." And there you go. Go ahead. What percent? Because it actually forty-three. It, I was going to say it's, it. just feels like it just feels like it's slightly higher than forty percent alcohol, and it's just it's just the right amount of alcohol mm. because see for that extra spice at the back of the throat because it it's still lingering, and it's yeah. as I say, it went it went to the top of my mouth. I talk about this about whiskeys quite a lot, but. It's the interaction within the mouth, you know, so it's on the tongue and it's maybe in the lips. Sometimes it's in the cheek. Sometimes it manages to fall underneath the tongue. And for me, you know, wrapping around the tongue. But for me, if it starts to interact with the top of your mouth, it's got it's got longevity. You know, it's got it's got somewhere to go. And it's now it's now trying to find the back of my back of my throat. It wants to find that and it wants to crawl down my neck and it wants to crawl down there. And it's it's going at a, it's going at a lovely pace. It's yeah. not, it's not, Jesus, it's going at a nice slow, it's like a slow, warm, you know, drink going down. It's lovely. Oh, wow, well, Michael O'Donnell. That's very interesting because you know what? There, there, there is definitely a, there is definitely a, a relationship there between uh, the new Dunville's products coming from Ecklenville yeah, and, yeah, and absolutely. products like this. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think the, the PX is bloody amazing. I think it's – I absolutely love that. Yeah. Love that, yeah. I, it, please, it's, tell me, please tell me the price is accessible, Sam. It will be, yeah. I mean, what what we're doing – this is an interesting thing we're doing. Uh, we, we only have 400 bottles, but rather than hike the price, we're, we're doing – uh, to, to do something interesting for the retailers, so we make sure that they're able to sell it at an accessible price. Yeah. So I mean, that, that's that's just on the business side of things, but we're we're trying to make it available with that. Yeah. Essentially, people that people that uh, do right by the Gelson's brand in terms of stock, few Gelson's, yeah. then then we'll 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 make sure we give it to them an accessible price. Well, that's so, good. So r- rather than the other way around, is just right hike the price and say right. Highest, no, that's not fair. yeah, that's because it's, it's definitely not the way to do it. It's not the way to do yeah. it, so, yeah. Yeah, so, so I mean, just just um, without naming names, um, I, I think there are probably around about a dozen places in, in Northern Ireland that I think would yeah. be able to to purchase this and sell this. So, r- rather than two or three, as, as might be the case, so I want to try and be a bit more, uh, because I think it's some, I think at some point, Samuel, I mean. You know the, the 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 way in which the gins are extremely accessible. I.e., yep. they're in every uh, they're in every supermarket. You know, so it's they're in you know they're in the big they're in the big chains. The whiskey's not specific, and it's not like that at the moment. And I think it's going to you. You're very lucky, I suppose. You know more than some of the new distilleries and some of the new brands that we have here. You already have those connections to those outlets. So at some point, yes, we, you know, you're selling just now through various retail stores in in, in Northern Ireland. But I think yeah. you're reaching. I think it's it's harking back to this idea of bringing Irish whiskey to uh, the masses in in England. You know, the, the populace of Northern Ireland and populace of Ireland is very very small. <laughs> you know, we can fit everyone in, in in Ireland into, you know, what is it, two thirds of London. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, you, when we talk about the masses that we could, you know, you could be selling to uh, over in uh, over in uh, over in England through those uh, big supermarket chains, when you get the chance, I think it's going to explode in terms of like you know people mass, you know, you know. You know. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think that thing is right. And um, it's accessible. Uh, that's, and, and, that, and that's part of it. I mean, there's there's kind of a two stage thing to this that we, I mean, we'll see. Girls and single malt is absolutely there every day. Uh, should be available to anyone, any, anywhere. Um, it's an everyday purchase. And then there are things like this, which where I think most most um, of your sort of more not especially is the wrong word, but your your kind of um, your more interesting um, off license 
off licenses or or wine shops or yes yeah. or, or spirit shops we think that's what that's where it should be and then rather than necessarily restricting everything to this the same two or three um the same two or three places where you get where you get most of your whiskey from if you if you know your whiskey it's just about making it a bit more available that that's what we're about yeah thank you so and, yeah. and as you said there's there's no if the whiskey is good enough and it's just gonna why not give it to as many people as you can that's yeah. that's it essentially yes 100 percent. and sean i think jason or admin's answering your question sean can you do me a favor sean i know can you text me i think you have my details can you text me or message me privately um via one of the social media accounts that we have i i, I just want to ask you a quick question and even if you can call me on my on my mobile later on i'll take a call about you know about 11. um i just want to ask you a quick question of something i need to ask you uh, but listen I've really enjoyed that, but I think we, you know, I think there's been a good bit of chat here. It's been a good bit. There's, I know we've had a lot of people on just watching us, and actually probably just sitting there, just uh, just sipping away. But uh, that the you whoever, I mean, I actually think maybe actually everyone in this room might have got you know the sick. I'm not sure. Maybe there's a couple that haven't, but we've been very lucky to have that, um, and that was really nice. You know, it was really nice, and I've just scored it quite highly um because actually it's this is a very good whiskey to to, to drink very good way to end sam very good way to end the, the session um but how about uh, use this time though sam because we, we, we we've had some honest conversation there but use mm. the use some time here get some messages across that you want you know that you want to distill in people here uh, and going forward you know what 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 else you see i mean what I, well, i'll tell you what was interesting because you, the you, Okay, there's the whiskey, and there's the and there's the um, and there's the uh, the gin, but there's loads in that portfolio, isn't there? There's loads and stuff in the portfolio, and uh, we've come across ourselves in, in something slightly different. You know what? Uh, with uh, you guys are involved, um, or your, your 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 colleagues are involved in sponsoring uh, the local uh, football cup here. Oh yeah, yes indeed. So, Sam, yes, indeed. I, I will give you I will give you a couple of minutes just to you can brag about that just now. Go ahead. So so yeah, I, in, indeed indeed we are we um. We are, we've got the we are sponsored the um, Sadler's Peaky Blinder Irish Cup, which uh, is uh, actually because of because of COVID and everything else. So that I actually had a had half a hand in in helping create some billboards for Windsor Park actually right. on the weekend. So yeah, so but essentially, Howard is a company. We uh, it's been going about forty years, and it was created by a guy called John Howard, who created with his uh, mother out of his. Um, her garage essentially is a wine import business back in the late 70s because he used to be a wine salesman for some of the big guys right. One of, some of the guys that would originally bring the wines from eastern europe into uk and ireland uh some of the first budget wines and so he yeah. started off by himself then and would get fill up his garage full of um full of wine from eastern europe and then sell it on to the supermarket and start off from there and and then start creating his own brands from there and he was a real real go get it so that's he created the original Halewood company and brought it up to be a, a massive success um with brands like Krabby, lambrini being another one which is still a huge seller to this day mm. but, but yeah john passed away uh about, about nearly nine years ago now and uh and and instead of, it's still a family owned and still family run company but the new ceo stuart has uh, came in with a a big vision of uh quite a bold vision and and once quite enlightened about what the future of drinks is about and and a number of years ago he he identified it. it's about it's going to be about people getting in touch with craft spirits and heritage and yes yeah. that so he has taken a company in the direction of of essentially investing in people like johnny and and small distilleries and and interesting ideas regional distilleries and investing in them and giving them the, the ability to come to to market in scale that's what Halewood does yeah. it so people like johnny can go and create and come up with their ideas but then the Halewood companies is can then go right here's our whole package we can then go and uh and get you into uh in, into larger places where a, the smaller guy by himself couldn't do and that's essentially the company that's what we do and so no, you get yeah 
so it, it's 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 just a lot of challenger brands effectively that's that's what we are so it's an interesting thing so but yeah you- You've got the sponsorship on uh, on Windsor Park here for for how long? Yeah, five uh, uh, yeah, five five year sponsorship. So yeah, so we we sponsored the Irish Cup uh, with with a uh, Saddlers Peaky Blind. So Saddlers is a again a family company that goes back to the eighteen hundreds, and uh, within that there's there's whiskey, there's beer, there's there's all sorts yeah. of being produced, and so and so yeah, but, um, actually because the, they they actually. There's family connections to the original Peaky Blinders, and uh, right, the original Peaky Blinders are actually about thirty odd years before the TV show right. is set, because uh, the TV show is set for particular stylistic reasons. Of course, particular ways. But the original Peaky Blinders were essentially street urchins that used to you dress in a certain way around Birmingham. A lot of them of Irish descent, and and hence that that's where the tradition comes from. And uh, so Sadler's. The Sadler's family, um, the actual Billy Kimber is an in-law of the, Sad- of the Sadler's family. In fact, the, wow. so Billy Kimber is a character. So Sadler's family have been making Peaky Blinder-related beer for a number of years. Going in. So, so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, um, avenue for that. So there's, now, there's an Irish whiskey, which is, uh, which is great. There's, there's beer, there's gin, there's rum, all of it's produced under the Sadler's under Sadler's name. And so we use that as, um, and that's the basis of sponsorship of of the uh, uh, no, Northern Ireland, of Northern Ireland of the Irish it's FA. Great. It's, I think it's great. I mean, like I'm just, I'm just, I just wanted to make that connection because, quite frankly, it's you know you 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 put a bit of an investment in there. You know, you put a bit of investment into the into the the local um, professional football scene. And I was lucky enough, my team uh, got to the fifth round of the Irish Cup, and we had our you know presentation, and we we were in the draw. Uh, you know, up at the Windsor Park, and you were you gave your representation, but uh, you know, ma- <laughs> massive, uh, massive fan of that. It's, it's good for the game. It's good for the local game. It's good for the local people here in Belfast uh, for 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 that to be the case. And I and I do believe that the games are just being played. So yeah, so, always... so, so, so so tomorrow it's uh, yeah, it's uh, I mean, f- phenomenal job that the guys at the IFA have done uh, in terms of getting that yeah. on. So back to back semi finals tomorrow. Right. And then a fight, then a final on Friday. It's uh, yeah, it's good. So that they've they've actually they've like the Premier League have got all this money, so they've managed to do all the testing. But the IFA have paid for all the testing and and getting all. I mean, the... you do know, you do know, my, my team aimed to win that next year. No, I mean we've uh, <laughs> we've bolstered our squad. We picked up a wee fellow from uh, from from Lard who used to play for Man City. We've we, we, we've just brought him in under the new transfer window. Uh, we're going to win that. You know, we, <laughs> our first year in the. Our first year in the cup, we get to the fifth round. That all I'm saying is that you know the, the only way is up. Absolutely, um, you know, absolutely. No. <laughs> absolutely. No, we, we all have our dreams, Paul. Our dreams. No, but I, I come from. I, I, I'm. I, uh, I am a. Uh, I, uh, full right, oh, a, a, right. a coal rain supporter. Are you a coal rain supporter? I, I am indeed. Yeah. Here we. we Here I am. Yeah. We sold. Uh, I, Okay, history, we, history, history of Colerain, isn't it? Listen, you know, we, we sold, uh, we sold, who, who did we sell? Uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick. Yes, yes, yes. So we, we, Matthew Fitzpatrick was with us uh, and you took him You took him half season. I know he's away to Glen Abbey now, but cracking player, you know what I mean? Cracking player. But um, yeah, listen, Samuel, I've generally appreciated tonight. No worries. There's a couple of guys in here I want you to connect with, make sure you get connections with them. They want to know where they can buy the product. They want, Absolutely. they want product in their country, i.e. Germany or Holland. Let, you know, make that happen. No, uh, no, we, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll okay. do so. Absolutely do so. Um, yeah. what, what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the uh we're gonna have some audio now until eleven o'clock. I'd like, you know, some music. Um from maybe we've got some DJs, we've got some bands and stuff we can put on here. It's a festival. But Sam, you're more than welcome to kick around. I'm sure some people will still be on here talking away and chatting. Um, you know what I mean, and you get texting away uh, to these people in the chat. But generally, Sam, thank you very much, and no worries. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Okay, cool. Thanks, all. Take care, Sam. Thank you. <laughs>